Hello, how are y'all doing? Um, I hope uh, my love Christ is with you in all that you do, and um, as he is always with me, and um, yeah, uh, I hope you find joy and peace and happiness and all that good stuff, right? Okay, okay, <laughs> okay. So like, um, in this video, I want to teach you about a box and whisker plot. Um, so this is useful, like say if you take the SAT, um, but you know, generally like in understanding like uh, a small a data set it can be a large data set but like you know usually good for a small data set if you're doing it by hand right okay 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 and uh there might be like a few things new to you even though you know perhaps um to uh those of you that have been around on this channel and know calculus and all that good stuff like you know this might not be uh this might be elementary right this might not be nothing new okay 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 so um let's get started and uh yeah hold on <laughs> All right, so suppose that like these are your like scores on a math quiz out of 10, right? Uh, you have like a four and then a five and then, <laughs> what's after five? Just kidding, just kidding. Seven and then seven and seven <laughs> and eight and then Nine, ten, right? Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And let's say that your teacher like gave extra credit, and uh, on one of them you have like seventy, right? Perhaps I could write that right here. So, uh, like, you're asked to create a box and whisker plot for this data set, and. The reason why box and whisker plot is useful is because, well, like it gives you a visual representation of like uh, the skewedness and otherwise of the data set, right? Okay. So, so first thing you got to do is like if your numbers are not arranged from smallest to largest, you need to arrange them in that order from smallest to largest, right? Also, you know there are other things like uh, mode, right? Mode is the most uh, repeated number, right? And notice that obviously the mode here is 7. But if we had like 3 8s, right? So uh, let's suppose that here we also had two additional 8s, the mode would be both 7 and 8, right? So there can be more than one mode. And if no number is repeated, then the mode is every number, right? So these are like the nuances that, you know, uh, uh, perhaps make this video worth watching even if you're familiar with this stuff. I have more nuances, so stay tuned. Okay, 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 so, 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 no, we're done. So, range, right? Range is the difference from, sorry, not from, the difference between, that's English lesson for you, the difference between the largest and the smallest number in your data set. So here it'd be 17 minus 4, which would be like 13, right? So that'd be the range. Okay. And then, of course, the mean, the mean is the average, so you would add all these numbers up, I believe I have 9 of them now, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, so you'd add them up and divide by 9, that would be your mean. So then, uh, median, this is required for our box and whisker plot, so we're going to find the median. So let's do it when we have like you know, nine uh, data points, right? So the median would be like the middle number. And obviously, if you have an odd number of numbers, then the median is exactly in the middle. So four to the left, four to the right, our median is seven right there, right? Okay, so this is median. And then uh, we need Q1. Q1, also known as quartile one, is uh, the median of the left half of the data set. Now, I intentionally wanted seven data, sorry, nine data points, an odd number of data points, because, well, uh, here's a nuanced item. So now, as I said, uh, quartile one is the median of the left half of your data set. So if you have an odd number of data points, then you include the main median in your calculation of Q1. So we look at all the numbers from the smallest to the median and find the median of that. And obviously, uh, quartile one is now, ah, 
I don't think this is gonna work. Point on one is um, also seven because uh, my box is gonna look real shady, isn't it? <laughs> so what do we do about it? Um, well, I'll change. I'll change this to a six. I'll do that. Okay. All right. So Q one is six now, right? And as you can imagine, uh, Q three, Q three is the median of the right half. Again, we uh, use the main median in our calculation of uh, Q three if uh, we have an odd number of data points. So uh, this is Q three. So Q3 quartile uh, 3, and our case is 9. So technically the median is Q2, right? Okay, now if you have an even number of data points, right? Let's say that I got rid of this 4. Notice that for your median, uh, you have, since you have an even number of data points, right? You'd have to average the middle 2 to find the main median. But then that would mean that like in the calculation of quartile 1, uh, you once again have like uh, an even number of items and there is no median to include in your calculation of quartile one. So uh, here, like again, if I hide this four, then 7.5 would be uh, the median or Q2. And Q1 would have to be 6.5. Because then, you know, we don't include this number in our calculation of Q1 and likewise when you're doing Q3. But I'm going to put my four back. All right? Okay, okay. And, uh... We have yet to draw our box and whisker plot. I don't know if y'all know what whiskers are, but like cats have whiskers. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Alright, alright. So so I think we're ready for our box and whisker plot. Alright, so here's how it goes. First you draw a line with whiskers on it. So these are the whiskers, all right? And you put the smallest number there, all the way on the left, and the largest number all, all the way on the right. Let me extend this a little bit. I washed this, by the way. I can't find my like favorite hoodie, the brown one. It's somewhere here, like, but anyway, I washed. I washed it. I don't wear the same stuff unwashed again and again for anyone who cares, but yeah. Um. Okay, so then Q1, like, you know, obviously this is a number line, so I, I should like, you know, order it, show, show some ordering on it, but, you know, we're just gonna uh, go like a cappella, right? So like six, I would assume would be like somewhere here. So th this would be like the left half of your box. And then, so uh, a nine, if that's 17, nine would be like somewhere like uh, right here, all right? And so then we uh, complete our box. And so this is Q1 on the left end. This is Q3 on the right end. And Q2 goes in the middle. So since this, this is 9, and this is 6, this is not intentional, it just worked out that way. Uh, Q2, 7 would be like somewhere here, right? Now, notice that like we have this outlier all the way on the right, and this is a great visual representation of like outliers or how your data is skewed, right? <laughs> and the skewedest definitions uh, uh, are counterintuitive, like, uh, as I said in my skewed formula that, that I presented a little bit ago, which is that, like, this is skewed to the right. Although, like, it's like, right? Okay, so, because you, you'd imagine it's uh, skewed to the left. Okay, and last thing before I leave is IQR. IQR is what's called interquartile range. Right? And the interquartile range is the difference between Q3 and Q1. So this is uh, Q3 minus Q1. And so that is be in our case 9 minus 6, which is 3. Yeah? Okay. Oh, 